Hi there. In this tutorial, we'll be teaching you how to trace the efficient frontier in Excel. OK, let's get started. The first step is really to prepare the data set. In this tutorial, I'll be focusing on a market with 10 stocks. And I have randomly picked 10 US stocks and I've downloaded their monthly returns over a 10 year period. So I've got 120 observations in total. But our approach would work with any number of stocks and over any sample period. And again, because these are realized returns or historical returns, essentially we are plotting the realized efficient frontier. But the approach would be again similar if you wanted a forecast of the efficient frontier based on expected returns. Right, once the data set is ready, the second step is to begin with computing the average return and volatility for each stock. So just to save us time, I've already done that over here, but I, I would like to go over and explain how I've done that. So for example, for the, for the first stock, what you need to do is simply select all the return observations and use the average uh, function to get the average realized return and to compute risk we can use the standard deviation function so this is the return volatility and again we get a point of 0.15 over here and i repeat that for each of the stocks so go to stock two compute the average return and the standard deviation of returns and so on and that gives me these initial 10 pairs so this is my market and what I've also, also done here is to plot these on a graph where I've got return on the vertical axis and risk on the horizontal axis. And each of these points uh, correspond to one of these 10 stocks. And what I would like to do is to find the efficient frontier in this market. But to be able to do that, I need one more uh, piece of uh, data and that's the covariance between each pair of assets. So the next step is to compute the variance covariance matrix, which is this, yes, this thing over here. So this is a 10 by 10 matrix. What I have here is I'm, I'm using the covariance function essentially, but what I have here on the diagonal, so these uh, squares is the variance of uh, each stock's returns. And the variance is simply the square of the risk, the, the volatility, right? So I can actually quickly verify that. So if I take this and square that, that gives me, okay, I need to format this much nicer. So you can see that it's two, three decimals just to make it comparable. So this figure is exactly the same as this. Right, so this is variance, this is standard deviation. Or for example, if I take this one and square it, it should give me 0 0.027, which is exactly the same, so on and so forth. Perfect. So what I have here is variances on the diagonal and covariances on the off diagonal. For example, this is the covariance between stock one and stock two. So how do I compute that? I use the covariance function. I choose stock one as my first stock and stock two as my second stock. And that gives me the covariance figure. And in fact, this will be identical to covariance between stock two and one. So which it doesn't matter which stock you put in first, uh, the, the figures will be identical. So you can see that this is the same as this, this is the same as this, so this and so on, okay? So this is my variance covariance matrix. Now I've got all the statistics I need to begin with computing a deficient frontier. And what we are gonna be using is the Excel's solver uh, add-in, okay? Which you can already see over here. So to find it, you need to go to the data tab and the solver add-in should appear here. If you've never used it before, it won't automatically appear here. And in, in in that case, what you need to do is to go to File, go to More and Options, 
And under options, go to Add-ins. So here, and you need to select Manage Excel Add-ins. Click Go, and make sure that Solver Add-in is checked in automatically. Okay. Right. Now, we can start forming our efficient portfolios. So how are we going to do that? If you notice here, I've got some of the cells highlighted, uh, which I'll be using uh, together with the solver. So what ideally I would like to do is to find efficient portfolios by changing these investment weights. And the solver will do that for me. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll begin with actually just giving some random values. So what I'm going to do, initially I will set everything to point 0.1 and the, the weights will be adding up to 1. So if you think of it like, you know, this is 10%, 10% and the portfolio will have 100% the investment weights. Okay. You can put anything random here initially, doesn't really matter. So the, I'm basically starting with an equally weighted portfolio. Okay. So I'm going to be changing these cells. And what I'll ask Solver to do is to minimize the risk of my portfolio for a given return level. Okay, So that's what we mean by efficiency, right? Efficient frontier. So I want for the lowest possible risk, the highest return. Okay, So let's begin doing that. So click Solver. So we need to set the objective. So I'm going to minimize the risk of my portfolio. So that's why this cell is selected. Okay. And I would like to change these weights. So these 10 cells are selected over here by changing variable cells. And I've got two constraints. Okay. One of the constraints says that the investment weights should add up to one. And the second one tells me to set the portfolio return to a particular, particular level. So this is what you need to choose, you know, what you need to decide yourself. So for example, I will begin with a return of, um, okay, this is not make, make this three decimals just to make it a bit nicer. Three decimal places, yeah. So I'm gonna set first to 0 0.001 and then increment 0 0.002, 0 0.003 and so on. So for each level of return, I will find the portfolio with the minimum risk. So that's my strategy. Okay, so let's go to Solver once again. So go to Data, Solver. So I'm going to start from a return of 0 0.001. Okay. And initially, you would notice that this box is checked. And maybe let me show you what difference that makes. So let's let's keep it checked for the for the moment. So what it will do is that if you keep it checked, essentially these weights will be always zero or positive, so non-negative basically. How do we interpret this economically? It means that if we check this box, essentially short selling is not allowed. Okay. So let's do let's do a run like this. So the sol it says solar found the solution. So we would like to keep the solution, yes. And as you can see, some of the weights are decreased to zero. Initially, everything was 0 0.1. And there are four positive weights here. So this portfolio essentially invests in these four assets. It has a return of 0 0.01 because I forced it to have this return. And it has a risk of 0 0.06. So I'm just going to save these because I would like to plot them. So this is my first portfolio. Okay, let's call it P1, portfolio one. But if I allow, allow short selling, I could potentially reduce my risk a bit more. So let's see the difference now. So let's run exactly the same thing. So the only difference is that I'm going to uncheck this box. Okay. Now, as you can see, those zeros have disappeared. And a couple of cases, I have negative weights. So I'm essentially going short on these three stocks. And if I compare this portfolio with what I've recorded earlier, the return is the same. But as you can see, the risk is a bit lower. So 
So with short selling, I can actually obtain slightly lower risk. So I'm gonna save that now on top of this as my first portfolio. And at the same time, so I'm gonna have a couple of portfolios, probably up to 0 0.05 or 0 0.6. So let's say P2, P3, P4, P5, and P6, okay? And I would like to add this as a series into this graph as well. So let's go to our chart design, go to select data. I would like to add a new series. X values will be portfolio risk levels. So I only have one observation at the moment, but more will come. And Y values will be the return observations. Here we are. So this is my very first efficient portfolio on the frontier, on the efficient frontier. So I'm gonna be adding new ones now, okay? And that's, that's what we mean by tracing the efficient frontier. Okay, back to solver. Now everything will be a lot faster. So go to data again, go to solver. The only thing now I'm gonna change is this constraint. So I'm gonna select a higher return level. Let's change it to 0 0.02. Let's get a new solution. Here we are. So this is my second portfolio. As you can see, its um, return is 0 0.02 because I've forced it to have this return and the risk is 0 0.064. Might be good practice to uh, save these weights separately as well. If, if you would like to keep an eye on the constituents of the efficient uh, portfolios that you construct, but for this video, I'm, I, I don't need that, so I'm not spending time on it. But for your project, that might be a good idea. So let's save this over here as well. And that gives me my second point on the efficient frontier. So it's gonna go up, okay? Now go to solver. I think you get the idea now. Change this to 0 0.03. Okay, solve. Okay, and here's my third efficient uh, portfolio. At another point, go to solver, change to 0 0.04. Okay, solve and okay once again. Here we are. Just copy paste its values. The fourth point. Let's do just two more, just to get a nice shape. Change to 0 0.05. Okay. So paste it here. Here we are. I think maybe we can stop here or, come on, let's do one final one. Why not? Change to 0 0.06. Solve. Here we are. So these orange dots data points represent these six efficient portfolios. And I can actually connect these lines. So if I just go to format data lines. Just going to connect them with a solid line. Let's just match the color. Don't make it too thick. And here we are. We have traced the efficient frontier. Now, this is all I want to, to cover in this video, but we will have a, a two follow-up, or at least one follow-up video, maybe, because I would like to do two more things. I would like to show you how to locate the minimum variance portfolio on the efficient frontier. And if there's a risk-free asset, I also would like to show you how to locate the optimal risky portfolio. But that will be uh, in a follow-up video, either together or maybe in two separate videos. Okay, thanks for watching and uh, see you in our next video.